you stupid bitch. Yeah, you're a stupid bitch, you stupid bitch. Welcome to the season five penultimate. 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 Which Come means on. the one before the last. <laughs> Okay. Welcome to the season five penultimate. I feel like that's not the way you pronounce that word, but being no wrong, so what can you do? Episode of Stupid Bitches Say What? what? The Aussie podcast about everything and nothing, but always with wine and your hosts, Sean Hipkins and Sky Lead Collet. It's Lead Collet. Lead. <laughs> This week, it's What's the Haps? You said the episode, lead, I said lead. The episode where we discuss the topics that piqued our interests in the previous four weeks. Listen in as we give an update on the Julia Wendell slash Madeleine McCann saga. Ooh. The DNA tests are back and we've got the deets. Also, an update on actresses Hayden Panettiere. Panettiere. Panettiere, I think it might be. As well as Amanda Bynes. The latest series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here for Australia, the Barbie movie, a new gating show that's coming to our screens. Gating well, show. Did I, say, did I say gating show? Mm -hmm. A new gay dating show, hashtag gating, that's coming to that. our screens. Well, Mania and the new Brokeback Mountain stage production that's coming, complete with songs plus. What's your drinking, Sky? Well, I've already had a couple of cheeky sips because I just completely forgotten. It just was, you know, casual for me to pour it and just have a sip on my way back. Hashtag like, double I'm podcast. I'm supposed to wait until I sip it on, on, on the pod. Live. Anyway, um, I've had this, this drop before. Mm. Stonely and it's an organic. And the last bottle I drank was an organic and I just do love them. I don't oh, you purposely... are super organic. <laughs> super healthy, by the way. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, I, the sip that I've had is so fucking delicious. And I have to tell you, Stonely, you kill it every time for me. I oh, just keep coming back for more. And it's actually got a little bit of a lemony bitterness about oh. it. Like it's almost got like a lemon taste. It's so fucking awesome. I'm like, Stonely, Skyly loves you. It, well, it's the organic range, but also I love their other ranges too. But I'm just like, seriously, Stone, they stop making wine so good that I just get too hungover all the time. Yeah. How can I do dry, dry July when you've got you your bastards? <laughs> dry July is nothing in this house. Thank you very much. Ever. Um, what are you drinking, Sean Bena Hipkins? Well, you're going to be complete. Oh, shit. Well, I've just actually. Uh, seen the year this is in and that's impressive but you're gonna hate the selection i, I didn't tell you my year it was 2021 again oh, look at you oh mm. that's nice so i'm drinking lagoon view mm. which is a semillon Ugh. wine just pure Ugh. semillon it's actually quite tasty i don't like mind it um it's a 2012 vintage you may as well drink a cardinal you shunt <laughs> it's pronounced <laughs> cunt <laughs> it's a 2012 it's 13 years old how much did you pay for that i think it must have came in the good pair days or someone bought it and left it here one of the two <laughs> jesus christ i know it's expensive either it's really shit wine and really old, or someone's left a very expensive bottle. It's quite nice. It's got, and you know how you say about the lemon? Mm. It's got to me like a lime flavour mm. to it. This has got a real lemony tang and I'm loving it. Mine's got like a lime Kool-Aid, Cotty's Cordial taste. <laughs> I'm, I'm, in, I'm in invested. <laughs> That's weird. I love, <laughs> I love Kool-A. I thought it was Kool-A, not Kool-Aid. Isn't it C-O-O-L-A? No, isn't it C-O-C-O-L-E-E? Coddies. Coddies. Cooler. Let's give it a gooler. Let's give it a gooler. <laughs> Coddies. <laughs> lime. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's cooler. Yeah, totally. I know, I know my fucking Coddies, mate. I grew up on Coddies. <laughs> well, 
nice. Well, it's got a Cottage Lime Cooler taste about it. It's a really it's rich nice. flavour, though. <laughs> lime well, cooler. like it's diluted <laughs> with grape. <laughs> it's too many. Mm. It's too many things. <laughs> <laughs> but how's but how's your week been, Tess? <laughs> Oh, look, my week's been great. Um, I actually don't think I really have anything about this week. I did have something really important to say, but then I've just... Oh, okay. Look, I, I'm, I was going to... I added this to my topics because um, I thought it was relevant to some of the things we're going to talk about, but actually I'll use it as my how's your week been. Uh, my dear husband, who I adore, has become obsessed with the number one streaming show on Netflix, which is The Night Agent. Have you mm. seen anything about it? No, I don't even think I've heard of it. It's the number one streaming thing. It's the worst show I've ever seen in my life and I want to kill myself. What's the premise, Blues? Oh, it's like a um, world's, not not world's ending, the government's against you. Um, it starts with a train bombing. It's got lots of bit actors that float in, like, you know, B-grade American actors that come in and out. There's lots of people I've never seen before in my life. Yeah. Um, acting's really bad. They swear a lot in it, which I kind of like. Well, we can um, relate. But the storyline is just so poor and Tyler is obsessed. And every time we get into bed and I, he's like, do you want to watch TV because I'm too tired? I'm like, no, I'm just going to go on my phone for a little bit. I'm just going to read my book for a little bit. He's like, well, can I watch my show? That's free agent for him to agency like, for him to watch. And I like literally, so if I'm reading my book, I put my earplugs in <laughs> because I can't handle listening to it because it's that bad. <laughs> Um, so what it's taken over reading? our life. Um, at the moment, I'm reading um, a new one because I finished. Boy, Swallows Universe. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I finished Daisy Jones and the Six. Yes. Um, desperately waiting to watch the TV show, considering I found out that, that, that it's all based on music. It's like a based on a rock band. And they've also brought out an album, like a proper oh. album based on it, as well as the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, don't right? dare listen to a single song. I'll wait until I've seen the show. Yeah, then I'll be you don't want any spoilers. I don't want any spoilers. Um, but I've read, I've raved about all their books. And it was a very great book. It wasn't as good as her other books, I don't think. Okay. Um, but... So now I'm reading another thrillery book. Well, it's not another because the other one wasn't thriller, but a thriller book from an author that I've read a bunch of his and they've been amazing. Australian thriller author. I've forgotten his name. Chris something. Uh, Christian White. Sorry, my apologies. Christian uh, White. The Nowhere Child was his debut novel and it killed it. It broke records. I've got it on my book. I've got a bunch of books I need to give you. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm reading his third novel. His second novel was also amazing, and I've got his third novel. Oh. And then I've got so I saw, I sat there and I thought, Crow Dads, or this Chris Christian. Yeah, um, White I novel. still haven't watched um, the Crow Dads movie, but I will I'm, not watch it until I read the book. Same, but um, and I remember you saying that it got poor reviews, but I've seen like a lot of people oh. saying that the movie's better than the book. Well, I've since then I've heard other things saying it's amazing yeah. too. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm the same. I refuse to watch it until I read the book. Well, I thought about it, but I thought I feel like we still need to try to be in sync when we do it. So get ready because I'm when I finish this one, that's my next one because I really desperately okay. want to. I'll read finish the Death ads. Trick. Yeah. In the meantime. Um, oh, how's your week been? Uh, my week has been okay. <laughs> so, I actually I got a couple of quick things I want to talk about. So, have you ever had a dream? where you you wake up and your dream has been that your partner has cheated on you or has got a new lover. So I've had a couple of those dreams and I had one recently <laughs> where Vinny had this new lover and I sort of had to come to terms with it and I was talking to Kylie and I remember, and it's funny, like it always takes me back to one of my childhood houses that I'm now living in. in Vinny doesn't dream. work without you, I'm telling you right now. Vinny it's, does not work without you. <laughs> but it's just the dreams. And I met his new lover and he was this younger guy and he had amazing lips. He had big lips and I was so jealous. They were pumped to the guards. And um, I remember I was talking to Kylie and all this stuff and I was just like, oh, I can't actually deal with it. I don't want to be nice to him anymore. But you wake up the next morning and it's so real that you're just like still a bit cranky. And so we've had our friend Ashling staying with us recently <laughs> who drinks almond milk and she left a 
a carton of almond milk here. So for the last week, I've been serving Vinny his coffee with almond milk in it, knowing <laughs> that he would definitely not approve of it. And then when the almond milk ran out, Just I told him, back for the <laughs> drink. kind of like, it's what you get, bitch. And so I told him when the almond milk ran out that he's been drinking almond milk all week. He's like, no, you didn't. I'm like, yeah, did you? could you not tell? He's like, you did not. I'm like, yeah, no, I did, babe. Happy almond milk day. If you ever see that guy again, I swear to God, it'll be oat milk next. That it's it's low calorie. And he would love that. He'd be like, it's way low calorie. It's way Mm. more less calories than normal milk, Mm -mm. even light milk. That won't do his um, his brain any justice. The fact that he found out that he was drinking it unknowingly for the week <laughs> really pissed him because off. Because he cheated and I was you like, now dreams. you know how I feel. If you ever see anyone younger with bigger <laughs> lips than mine, I do not want you talking to him. <laughs> you do have big lips. <laughs> I've had a lot for him. <laughs> like, lips better than mine? Are you serious? <laughs> I, know, I want my lips up to here. <laughs> I like my here. lips exactly where they are, right here. Yeah, That's no, enough that for me. Shit up. <laughs> I don't have tiny lips, so look. You do have puckers. Mm. Do. Some people are blessed with them. Some people have to get injectables. And this guy also definitely have a had injectables. In. I have a butt chin. Yeah, me too. It. Someone called me a dick nose once. And I was like, what? <laughs> Well, maybe it was Dick Chin. I don't know. It was a kid anyway. I was very offended. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to cut some of that for shit. <laughs> I think that was good. It was quality, quality podcast. Oh, we can't even blame the fact that we're super drunk because I've only drunk a couple of glasses. I'm getting a bit pissy. I'm not going to lie. You only had 11.4%. I had 13.5%. And I had two bottles of bubbles pre. Sure, sure, sure. It's always a competition with you. This, well, I was just stating facts. You could also hold your liquor better than me. This one is 7.4. 7. Drinks. Drinks. Oh, but what percentage, please? I can't see it. Mine's 13.5. Oh, more than the other one. This is eight drinks in mine. Plus. Yeah, I think your other one was eight drinks too. Either way, I'm still feeling pissy. I haven't had many carbs today. I'm a little bit pissy too. I haven't had that many carbs. Actually, I did have, I did have a few carbs. I had some rice with lunch, but I had some cauliflower leftover. rice with dinner. Oh, oh. <laughs> I had leftover tuna mornay that I mm. made during the week for lunch. I love tuna mornay. Oh, I so do I. I put so much veg in mine, like I make it into mm, a paste me with too. the veg. Yeah. <laughs> The cheesy Frozen veg. sauce veg, yeah. And then I was told Belinda how I made tuna mornay once. She's like, oh, I haven't had tuna mornay in ages. Send me the recipe. So I sent it to her and I'm like, it's only fucking like 480 calories in the thing. And then she goes, yeah, mine's a bit more. I put a shit ton of pasta in it. I was like, okay. <laughs> and butter. I put heaps of butter in mine. Well, it's for the sauce. You need to. It gives it the mornay <laughs> test. And a bit it's... of nutmeg. <laughs> oh, I don't do the nutmeg, yeah. Mm. Just a tad. You don't need oh. too much nutmeg because you don't want it to just, just taste completely of nutmeg. <laughs> Take her heavy on the nutmeg, please. <laughs> All right. Just a quarter teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get into our topics? Yes, please. So do you want to hear about the Madeleine McCann DNA results? Oh, because I already know, but and I suspected, but also, yes, I want to hear your take on it because I was like, Tyler said to me last night in bed, so the results are in continue it's a negative so as we know in two rise so as we know in 2007 two uk parents and this is just a recap for those who may not have listened to our previous what's the haps two uk parents kate and jeremy khan lost their daughter while enjoying a holiday in portugal the girl in question was a three-year-old named madeline mccann and to this day it's unclear how she disappeared and we still don't know what happened to this little girl If Madeline was alive today, still, she would be 19 years old. With flex in her eyes. In February 2023, 16 16 years after McCann's disappearance, a young Polish woman named Julia, or probably pronounced Julia, 
Julia, I was thinking Julia Gulia the whole time. Julia Gulia took to Instagram and she asserted that she might in fact be Madeline. And then the internet went cray cray. So the DNS DNA test results are out. DNS? What's a DNS, DNS plus? DNM plus. The test results have shown that while there is a small percentage of Lithuanian and Russian in her, <laughs> she is pretty much 100% Polish. And as we know, Madeleine McCann is British, meaning they cannot be the same person. Mm. So after Wendell travelled from Germany to the United States. DNA doesn't States, lie, people. DNA does not lie. Specifics. She took the previously discussed DNA test, which has shown that she isn't Madeleine McCann. However, there is still, allegedly, lots of proof that Wendell was definitely trafficked to Poland from another country and Ooh. definitely not the biological parent daughter of her parents in Poland even though she's 100% Polish in her DNA. In March, Julia actually appeared on the Dr. Sh Phil show. Please. And there was a lot of a lot to unpack after the episode, such as claims that multiple Polish Dr. Phil hospitals... Dr. so reputable. Well, look, he's the Wikipedia of the talk show host. Ugh, so hard. Gross. So such as claims that multiple Polish hospitals I'm didn't have... <laughs> didn't have Wendell's birth certificate and the belief that Wendell's family is lying. So remember how the American psychic got involved with it all, Fia Johansson? I recall. Mm. Well, she is now Julia's power of attorney and she appeared on the show with Julia and she claims that, and I quote, one of my team members basically drove almost three hours to the hospital that the mother claimed that she birthed her. They didn't find anything. Question, please. One memento. Uno um, memento pull for the law. Why does a 19-year-old need a power of attorney? I'm not sure either. I thought mm. that too. I thought it sounds like somebody's if trying she was 17, to um, take you know. advantage. Yeah. Mm. So they said, we don't have any here. So they went to another hospital and they said the same thing. Now, to Dr. Phil's credit, this program wasn't a Julia Wendell PR fest and Dr. Phil actually dropped some decent questions, questions into his chat. He asked her what she would do if she's not Madeline McCann and is instead biologically related to her mother, to which Julia rep replied, I don't know. So the family statement is, so Julia's family... Talk about exploitation on top of exploitation 100 percent. there's actually something funny that um i've seen in facts and it's like dr phil invited some guy who dr. accused so of sorry, exploiting American children people. like a jackass type show and it, he accused this guy of exploiting children for fame through the videos that they sent in and the guy turned up to the show dressed as dr Dr. Phil with his head shaved in a bald patch and everything. Nice. And then confronted him and pretty much said, you're doing the exact same thing, exploiting people for money as well. Anyhow. So Julia's family. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it is a duck. It's certainly a duck. Now walk that duck, bitch. So Julia's family provided a statement. Top of your shirt looks like boobs, by the way. <laughs> It's my husband. No, pull it, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Hang on, wait, wait. <laughs> Say cheese. Uh... Hi, Vincent. Hi. But pull it down where it looks like it looks like boobs. Boobs. No, no, you got the TV. Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> boobs. <laughs> so, Julia's family provided a statement which part of it reads, we always tried to understand all situations that happened with Julia. Threats to our address from Julia, her lies and manipulations, activity on the internet. The internet won't forget. And it's obvious that Julia isn't Maddie. We had never said that this current situation. So what happens next? But she's not their kid though, either. So that so she was right in saying she might have well, a thought process of being that at being Madeline McCann because she's not their child. Well, but I don't think that's actually sort of come out yet either because oh. they would need the parents' DNA. Oh, so I she, see, I see. Okay. While, while Julia Wendell knows that she isn't Madeline McCann, there still is a chance that this journey isn't over. Mm. 
This is because if Wendell still believes she's been trafficked, she might work with a private investigator to try and dig up some info regarding her origins. So, yeah, that was a bit of a fizz. I mean, we kind of always knew it was a long shot, but it would have been a great fucking long shot if it came through. Mm, I could have told you that fucking weeks ago when we did the first podcast that there was no chance. Well, there there was always a chance. You can't say Mm. no chance. Mm. What's your story, you stupid bitch? I feel awful for that family. Yeah, but you they never know. That. You never know what actually the truth is. Mm. Okay. Well, not yet anyway. I'm going to talk about Hayden. How are we going to say her name? Pen- Patatone. Patatone. So- I don't even know if that, that that's actually a cake from Do Italy. You- <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of spelt, it's spelt the same though, right? A little yeah. bit similar at least. So the bitch from Heroes and Scream 4. If we know anything about the last true crime that we did, my pronunciation of anything that comes from America or Canadian or any type of word or Canadian. is not right. <laughs> Canadian. Um, it's not right. Well, like I give can't... me red hot go and that's the main thing. Give me too many syllables and it's very difficult for me to understand pronunciation and I'm just going to say it how I think it sounds. It's just the way it's going to be. I'm a locker locker. Um, Anyway, so she's in the news at the moment. Huge fan, by the way. Nashville is my favourite show oh, of yeah, hers. Oh, yeah, she was in that, yeah. Um, it, Mine was it, Heroes. Oh, Heroes, she was amazing in Heroes. She's been amazing in so many things. I love her to death. Um, but Nashville, they had a whole soundtrack after soundtrack seasonal. They had to break it into parts because of Nashville. You would actually probably like Nashville. It's very... Um, it's got the mother from it's American very Horror like Story. It's very Days of Our Lives um, storyline, but the songs are insane. It's very good. Um, but it goes up and down in terms of like you want to kill yourself a little bit with the storyline. It's so bad. Anyway... Um, loved her in Heroes, then she was in Nashville, have been a huge fan forever. But she's in the news at the moment because she took back her boyfriend who went to jail for about, I want to say 18 months. I could be wrong. American people, please correct me. Send us messages if I'm wrong. Yes, we get flooded with your we feedback. We love it. Um, but, yeah, he was in jail what? for, I think, about 18 months for punching her in the face. Oh, um, so domestic violence, right? But it's it's funny because when I was reading the article, because I was like, oh, this is interesting, um, because I always think of her as this strong, powerful, mm. you know, not only is she an amazing actress, she has an amazing voice, she's an amazing singer, um, and I just love her to death. But when I was reading a little bit more into it, I found out that not only had he been in prison for domestic violence and he's just come out and she's taken him back, um, which we'll get to that bit. Save your judgment till the end. Um, oh, no judgment. I can't judge. But I don't understand. So like. she's the one who had. But he doesn't hit me, okay? He just shits on me in my <laughs> dreams. <laughs> so she had a baby to the massive wrestler. Or oh, what's his name? He, but he's in Ukraine. He's Ukrainian. He's huge. If you look at them together in photos, she's this tiny, tiny women, woman, like the smallest woman in the world almost. Like she's like so tiny and he's giant. And I remember when they first started dating before they got married, everyone was like, oh, my God, look at the size difference between the two of them. That's insane. Um, oh, I don't yeah, really... I was just seeing it. So Vladimir Kishko. Yes. Klitschko. And he's, is he? Klitschko. Is his birthplace Ukrainian or is he from somewhere else and then so he he's, lives he's, in Ukrainian? He's in 44 Ukraine. and extremely supportive and a champion. He's fucking huge. Mm. But is his birthplace Ukraine? Let me find out. Well, she's quite short, to be fair. So when I was reading, th- exactly, she, she's quite tiny, but he's also giant, right? So it's like tiny little person. And I was fascinated by this story. They seem very much in love. They had a baby. Um, Representing Ukraine in the Olympics. He's born go. in Kazakhstan. There you go. Okay. And he's a year younger than, older than me. And she's what, early 30s? Get into that. Hang on. Anyway. For the sake of you Googling it, you Google and I'll keep talking. Yeah. Um, but I thought they had this real love story and stuff like that. I'm sure that they did. I'm not putting any shit on that. 
but it came out because she's taken him back this new boyfriend after the domestic violence claims and she's taken him back um that she's had lots of issues with substance abuse and to the point Bless. where her baby that they had together with the ukrainian guy got taken from her and she ended up um having he had full custody in ukraine with that baby so whilst I, she has visitation, like she still sees the child, like it's not like yeah. kind of like she's been, you know, social services or anything like that. But I was very shocked to read the articles. I was surprised to see it. I was like, oh, what's happened here? Yeah. I was reading through it. And then I found out that she had massive substance abuse issues pretty much before she was pregnant. Then after she was pregnant to the point she was drinking all the time and taking, and when Bless she wasn't up. drinking, she was taking all these other drugs to try to stop herself from drinking. That was Jesus. messing her up. So he took full custody of the baby and took the baby back to Ukraine um, and has still has full custody. And then she ended up with this new guy. That um, is in Ukraine anymore. Who beat her up and now he's just come back from prison. And she's taken him out, taken him back. It's just um, trouble gal. Well, this is the part that I was thinking, like I was reading the article and she gave an interview and I don't know, sometimes, and this is what I was thinking, like a, based on surface appearances, I feel like sometimes, you know, stuff happens and you do need to look at the bigger picture. And certainly if there was substance abuse and stuff like that, that can completely change someone. And I honestly get the feeling from her that she's a really cool, awesome person that's maybe been a child star for years and years and years and been in a made terrible a couple of wrong industry choices. and made some wrong choices. And yes, you know, that led to her being with this dude, but he came out he served his time. Like she didn't try to get him out or anything like that. And now he's out and apparently he's sober too. She's sober for the last couple of years. They're both sober together um, and they're back together and they're quite happy and living their life. And I yeah, was just very you got to be very wary about that shit, don't you? Yeah, like I feel like if I had to give up alcohol forever, I don't know what that would look like for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because that what happens. Like if you've had substance abuse, like you can't drink. Like if you go to NA and like narcotics anonymous, well, because you make drinking is a gateway to it, isn't it? Really? Yeah, exactly. Because you make poor choices when one is drunk. <laughs> 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 well, you do. Like you know, you may not always make stupid choices, but when you're drunk, you're a bit more loosey goosey. But I also find it fascinating that when some people do own it and acknowledge it and be like, do you know what? We've done this. We've done that. We've had been in some shitty, shitty places, but now we're both straight, you know, on the straight and narrow um, and we're going to support each other and build our yeah. life again. And we're going to start. We give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And I think like it's really If history inspiring. repeats, then you probably need to separate your ways. I think in like, you know, the entertainment industry, it would be the absolute worst place and also to you've got to think of drug abuse and when he got done for punching him in the face at that time, like what else happened that you don't know about? And... Well, that's the other thing. And it's like, what's a punch in the face though? Is it like a full fist? Well, if you get in... 18 months in jail for it, it's a pretty heavy crime. Well, I think it also depends on the scenario too. It depends on who's on your side, especially in the States, like, you know, what yeah, the thing you, is. You've got to think how many people get away with domestic violence mm. and get no jail time for worse than punching in the face too. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I feel like knowing her as an actress. <laughs> well, look, you are best friends. <laughs> Being a huge fan, I don't want to be one of those people who was like, you know, do whatever you want. But I'm just like, when I was reading her story, I was like, I feel like she's been through some tough stuff. Mm. And I feel like, you know, she's also accomplished some amazing things and I feel really bad for her and I hope her life gets better. Of course, and that's what you wish. She's making good for, choices, yeah. but it's pretty harsh to take someone back after serving 18 months of beating you up, yeah, um, losing your daughter to mm -hmm. your ex-husband who lives in the Ukraine with everything that's going on. Especially in the Ukraine, yeah. Mm. It must be crazy. It must be a crazy situation to be in. Yeah. But she, um, oh, I don't know, actually, because we both have just said we don't know if we've, we haven't seen the latest Scream movie, but there was talk about her appearing in the latest Scream too. 
Yes, I have heard that. Because she didn't, you didn't actually see her die. And then in the last Scream movie, there was a YouTube page on the movie where it had Survivor, whatever her name was, Paige or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think actually watching, um, and I don't know if I shared this in the last podcast, I probably did because I was super drunk and I can't remember, um, but Tyler and I watched the Judy Garland story. You mentioned um, something about that with Renee Zellweger because I mentioned her with What, what if. a fucking film and yeah. i and i know you said that it was good but you never I haven't seen it. About, oh i thought you said it was good anyway no. so we you know how we do our pick 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 and he picks ugh, movies that i have to sit through and most of the time i love them anyway like I'm, i don't mean to enjoy good. them i do he, he doesn't really he never really picks a bad movie actually it's very rare he picks a shit movie and I normally enjoy them, but um, I always make sure that my pick is like something that I'm desperately wanting to watch. And I said to him, I really want to watch this Judy Garland. It's been out for yonks. Um, it's got Renee Zellweger in it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, put it on. And we both loved it, like loved it so much. Um, and her whole life was about her being mostly a drug addict and how she was forced into that situation because the industry she was with from a small child, how they used to drug her, like through Wizard yeah, of Oz. Yeah, they gave her uppers and downers. And, and all she cared about yeah. was her kids, but they kept dragging her away and making it impossible for her to be with her children. Um, it Which was then fucked up her brutal. children's life. And she was so on so many drugs all the time and she was constantly manipulated by every person around her all she wanted was someone to love her and she just you know ended up dying in such tragic circumstances it was brutal it was I'm such watching, a um, great movie but so sad so fucking sad i've been redoing will and grace this tv series and i'm up to the new series and up to season three which is the very last season of the new reboot and they mention it too. They say they mention um, Renee Selwiger as Judy Garland in it, and they're like, apparently they they make some comments about how the first half of it was a bit lull, but then she actually shines in the second part oh. of it. Yeah, Renee Selwiger in that film is breathtaking. Like honestly, I love Renee Selwiger. I always have loved her. Bridget Jones, everything she does is amazing. Like I just love her. <laughs> Yeah. so much she was I so good if you have not seen that film you have to see it and it makes me desperately want to see the original star is born and i said to tyler that's my next pick the judy garland star is born yeah. and the, the barbara streisand star is born like they're what we're going to go through next because he yeah. watched star is born there's, there's a star is born before that as well before judy oh is there yeah yeah so I made Tyler watch the Lady Gaga one. He was yeah. devastated by the end. In the end, he said to me, I cannot believe that you made me watch this film. See, I and that was one that got ruined by the soundtrack for me because I was listening to the soundtrack and I knew that at the end he must have died. So, yeah, a 1937 film, A Star is Born, is the original one. And who's in it? Janet Gaynor. Oh, okay. Farm Girl. Yes, yeah, well, become a Hollywood actress. Tyler loved the Gaga Star is Born so much that he was just as devastated by the ending as I was when I saw it at the cinema. He was like, I can't believe. And then when the dog is there after he kills himself, he was like, how could you do that to the dog? Like, seriously, <laughs> after all the things. Like, and he was so trying. He was like, and he, when it was over, he was like, I can't believe you made me watch that. I can it's imagine. The saddest. It too. I can film. do that to the dog. <laughs> he was <laughs> like, that is the saddest we've ever seen. He was so traumatized by it. He was like, the next day, you fucked me up. You completely <laughs> stitched me up with that movie, Sky. Like, that is the most fucked up movie I've ever seen. And he oh, loved he it all the way. He on stage. He was like, Gaga is just everything about her. He was just like, she's just the next level and i was like no i know he loved it loved it loved it loved it until it got really bad in the end he was like what's happening (laughs) sky what's happening what's gonna happen next i was like baby i can't tell you you have to watch it (laughs) he's like i don't want to see how it ends (laughs) you gotta see it baby maybe it's gonna end bad i'm very sorry it's gonna end bad (laughs) he's so traumatized like how he was 
<laughs> and Poland lost oh, Eurovision. God. And then he hated Eurovision up until about three months ago. <laughs> he already has his top five, by the way. I don't. Okay. I can't even decide. Ooh. I like every song that comes on. I'm like, I hated this song. Now I like it a little bit more. Where? What am I going to do? That's how I feel about Tattoo. Like when Tattoo comes on now, I get this sort of warm feeling. I'm like, oh, yeah, I do like this. I'm ready to cut winner. Sweden. I'm ready to cut Sweden. It's not in my top, top five. I don't even think it's in my top 10, but I do love it. Yeah. Okay, That's let's get involved. Rich. Let's get this thing episode done and then we can hear a vision. <laughs> Where done, did we even get to? We got, I did Madeline McCann, you did Hayden. Story. Yes. All right. So, I'm a Celebrity Australia is back for its ninth season, please. And after all the COVID fiasco, that was, they're back in South Africa and it's not pre-recorded. Hurrah. Too so, much reality TV for me. Oh, not for me. So the, the cast this year has a lot of familiar faces for me. So I want you to tell me if you know them or not. So our first one is Domenica Calacaro. Gross. Yeah, you know where she's from, don't you? Last year's maths. maths. She's who I think is an absolute bully that was glorified somehow by the public as a hero. <laughs> And she is just as fucking precious and obnoxious in this season. And I've only seen four episodes, please. She's fucking, oh, she just drives me insane. Ian Dicko Dixon. Ugh. So the former Australian Idol ugh, host. Ugh, he's, ugh. he's actually pretty nice in the show thus far. Uh, Kerry Ann Kennelly. Oh, my God. I do actually kind of like her, but she's also a massive racist. Racist, yeah. So the show has been trying to get her every season and she's finally agreed to join, but she's had some serious stipulations in her contract, such as including her, um, such as her being allowed to... heights, constant showers. Well, she gets to um, access her makeup, which she's been, which they agreed to. So she's got her own little fucking... She old as fuck. And she's got her own little stall of makeup that's at the edge of her bed. And it really upset Domenica that Carrie Ann was able to have makeup and she couldn't. And she thought it created a divide. Please, you know, Carrie Ann can Exactly. I know. And she's like, why does she get to have it and we don't? And it really upset her. And she and Carrie Ann, when she spoke to Carrie Ann about it, Carrie Ann goes, Oh, that's because it was in my contract. So um, fight harder next time. And also, I'm Australian royalty. Did you not know? And pretty much. Do you know exactly. my roots? And, and I that's come what she said to someone else. I'm a massive racist, but that's do what you she know said to how much else. money they would pay me to be on this show? They're probably paying me like $20,000. They're paying me like $150,000. Well, it's funny you say that. Carrie Ann's actually getting $180,000 to be on the show. Of course she is. Then the next person underneath it. I'll to get to him when I tell him. So Carrie Ann said it's in a contract, so fight harder next time. Fight harder next time. Yes, and, bitch. And okay. Dominica gets get into a down. fight with Dicko about it and ends up bawling, crying like an absolute child. Like, I mean, child, like it, like Cole sobbing. <laughs> it's just up there. And then he talks to me like, oh, God, I hate her. Anyway, Harry Garside. You Never don't know him? him? Well, that surprised me. I thought you might have because you're into the fighting. He's a professional boxer. And I wasn't oh. really aware of who he was, but Vinny, surprisingly, knew exactly who he was. Tyler Wood, we could yell out to him right now and be like, how do you not know who he is? He's <laughs> won all these awards. This award, this award, this award, this award. And he's an absolute ally of LGBT, and he has photo shoots and tutus and shit like that. So oh, it's quite... I love that for him. And he's actually really cool. He comes across as a pretty cool dude. Um, so is so he gay like or is he hot? Is no, he he's hetero? straight. He's straight, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Paul apparently his trainer dropped him when he found out he was doing I'm a Celebrity because they were heading in different directions. Ooh. So Peter Hellier. So hang on, before you get to Peter Hellier, so is are you to, are you going down the ranks of how much they're paid or are we going to get no, to no, that No, 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 I'm end? just getting oh, to okay. it, yeah. Peter Hellier, I'm not a fan. Yeah, he's okay. He, he There was a lot of stuff that he did. He's okay in this show. He but rode, a lot of rode his stuff. hotels for years and years and years. Yeah. I don't and think he, he's funny. He, he kind of got his own, but yeah, he was never my cup of tea in the hilarity thing. Not a but fan. he's an Aussie TV staple. Deborah Lawrence. Do you know her? The musician? No. 
She was the second Pippa from Home and Away. Oh my God! Yes, I knew that. Yes. Oh my God, yes. She's actually very cool in it as well. She is actually she's really like um. She's like Pippa in real life. She's a very sort of nice, like us doing, type chick. This is us doing like the whole um cast of a survivor. I hate people that you love and you love people that I hate. But so you like, like Deborah Lawrence, say? Well, I think in back in the home and away days, sure, but I don't know that I'd love her on the show. She's but... pretty much like Pippa was in real life. She's like a sort of hippie cool chick. Mm. Do you know Aisha Scott? I don't know if you know her. So she was a stew in Below Deck Bed and she's currently chief stew on Below Deck Down Under. I watch all the Below Deck series. Oh, Beck and Chris were telling me about how much they love, the, they love Below Deck. And I was like, I, I love it too. Vinny cannot it. stand her just based on a voice alone. He's like, oh my God, every time I hear her speak, I want to kill her. Mm. So yeah, they're competing to be King or Queen of the Jungle this year. And you know, I am watching every app. Mm. Lol. Gross. Next. Well, I feel like most of our stuff is just about TV. Like, what are we if we're not TV? Um, well, my next one ties in with the night agent is Wellmania, which is Celeste Barber. So she is tracking Ooh, less. I think Kylie's told me about this show, actually. I've heard How about... do you not know who Celeste Barber is? I know Celeste Barber, but I didn't know she was in Wellmania. But Kylie had mentioned something to me about what's your show, Celeste Barber. So Celeste Barber has more fans on Instagram, more followers than Gwyneth Paltrow, and she's Aussie. Mm. So she's the chick who, um, like, mimics. She became famous by mimicking, um, like, models' poses and um, famous actresses' poses. So, like, she'll do, like, something, like, they'll be, like, you know, all like looking insane and their hair's blowing back and stuff like that. And she impersonates them with what she's got in her house. She's she's very attractive. Like she's very, and she's probably a bit, a little bit older than me, maybe a little bit younger than you. <laughs> Shut <laughs> she's a bitch. Um, and she certainly looks like she doesn't have the fake eyelashes or all the shit she could have on her face with all the money that she must have, having more fucking Instagram followers than Gwyneth Paltrow. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Um, so she's made this new show um, and it's like it was trending second behind The Night Agent, which is a terrible show, I think. And we've, we're have what we up to this, the fourth episode. So all it is about is about her doing lines of coke constantly. So she's like a celebrity chef in New York, an Aussie celebrity chef in New York. And she comes back for her best, best friend's 40th birthday. Um, And then she gets, her bag gets stolen on the beach because she's fucked up. (laughs) She's had this massive night. So she pretty much rocks up late to it. The, The whole show starts, it's about, she leaves in the first episode and she's just got this gig as a celebrity host on this reality TV show in New York. And it's this amazing show. It's going to, she's already really popular. She, you know, it starts with her fucking some guy and the guy's like, Oh, can we have breakfast? She's like, no, get out. And they're having lines and stuff like that. Um, and she's like, you know, he got to go. And then she pretty much gets dressed and goes to a club straight after she kicks him out. And she's like, and she walks into this club and they're all like, hi, Liv, Liv. And everyone's just fawning over her. And then she goes up to this like TV producer and she's like, hey, I just want to say to you why I'm the perfect person to be this celebrity cooking judge. So she is a, um, uh, she doesn't cook, but she's like, what do you call, what's the word where they taste everything? Food oh, critic, yeah, yeah. Food critic. Yeah. So she's a food critic. And they, sh- this producer who's running the show goes, yes, actually, I think you're perfect, but you need to up your profile a little bit. You need to do a couple of really crazy things to, for me to help sell it for you. And she's like, great, I'm, I'm about to leave in the morning to go to Australia for the weekend and I'll be back and then I'll do all the things that you've asked me to do. Um, so she gets on a plane. She walks into her best friend's 40th birthday. It's like the end. They're all there doing the cheers. There's like a ke- like a cake and stuff like that. They're all like singing happy birthday. And she walks in. She's like, I'm here. And then she <laughs> runs in. She pushes everyone out of the way. She stands on a glass table and she wants to do a cheers. And her friend who hasn't seen her is like, yeah, I'm so-. she's like best friend of the world. I love her so much. The rest of the family and all the friends are like, who the 
fuck is this bitch? She stands on a glass table, sculling other people's champagne, and the glass table shatters. She falls over. <laughs> and then she ends up the next day, like, fucked up on the beach, and someone steals her bag, which has a green card, because it's like a piece of paper, I think, the green card that you get, you know? So you've got your passport, but it's a separate piece of yeah. paper, obviously. Anyway, so it gets stolen. And um, she go, she finally gets, so a friend who she raced to be there for her birthday is a lawyer. So she gets her an appointment the next day with the British, I mean, the American consulate. She walks in there. She's fucking been partying way too hard and she pisses him off. He hates her. And while she's talking to him, she fucking has an episode where she completely passes out and they take her green card off her right then and there because they have to call an ambulance and stuff like that and it turns out because her dad died of a heart attack when he was like 48 and she's in her 40s um that she's got this terrible high blood pressure she's super ill like she's literally gonna (laughs) die in the next couple of years um and so they the american consul is like you can't come back we don't want you to be a burden to our health system. Like, doesn't matter who you are, you're dead to us. And what a great health system they have. And so there's like two doctors in Sydney. So it's in Sydney. There's two doctors in Sydney that can verify her and like pass her. And the doctor's like the biggest bitch. She's like, bitch, please. Oh. You're never going to pass any of our medicals. Um, anyway, so she like tries to be really good. And she, she goes on this health thing and she gets all those cups where they punch you and the blood comes out and stuff like that and her brother's a personal trainer runs this whole successful business and then she just runs a mark but she's trying to be healthy and there's this one episode where she finds this guy and she's gonna get this really good story for um the, the like the paper or whatever she works for in new york Anyway, so she goes back to this party and she ends up having all these lines of coke, gets super fucked up, and her brother's organised for her to have a spin class that she's been building up to because she's been really good on this health kick. And she walks into the spin class after she bailed on some dude she was on a date with when she found out that he was celibate because he was in Narcotics Anonymous. Um, And she's like, yeah, we're not going to have sex. Fuck off, (laughs) pretty much. But she's still sober. She's been sober for like four days or something. And she meets this other guy who's going to give her this really good story. She goes back. She ends up in this massive party, lines of coke everywhere, blind, rotten, drunk, still goes to the spin cast in the outfit that she was in on this date with this guy. And the guy's on the bike next to her. She's like fucking pedaling in (laughs) spin class, fucking spews everywhere. <laughs> oh, it's insane. Tyler thinks it's the best show he's ever seen in his life. Oh wow. He's like, this is insane. He yeah, no, loves it. Kylie, I just had a look at the messages and Kylie had sent it a week ago. She's like, Have you seen Well Mania with Celeste Barber? I can totally relate. <laughs> it's just like you gotta watch it. <laughs> it's very good. It's it is very good. The acting's a little bit weird. Like, it's not from Celeste Barber. She's perfection all the time. Um, but sometimes the comedy's a little bit off, I find. And the other acting that comes in is a little bit off for me. Yeah. Um, but the whole concept is super relatable. <laughs> and she's always like, I'm in the hellhole of the world in Sydney. <laughs> and her family's like, stop saying that. <laughs> They're right near her when she's saying <laughs> And her brother, the fitness joke, he's like planning this wedding. He's gay and like his gay, like soon to be husband hates her. And they're always just like dogging her totally. And she's just like, fuck off. She's constantly, and she's like, keeps like pushing him away, like punching him and stuff. She's I have to insane. Check out. And she's like trying to be really good, but she just keeps like all these things get keep getting put in front of her. And she's like, <laughs> can't resist <laughs> I'm like, you don't understand but her cholesterol is so high the doctor's like you're gonna die man you are so ill you can't keep partying like this you're actually gonna die and so that's what us. happens to her yeah <laughs> basically <laughs> it's very good and she is amazing in it and i'm so happy for her because like go aussie chick just starting out on instagram from just 
yeah, yeah, impersonating yeah. people and having like no followings shit. and just killing it, like in a cool way too, not like a dumb way. Like, yeah, look yeah, at my yeah. lips, look at my plastic surgery, look at my fake eyelashes, look at yeah, my yeah, yeah. dumb stuff. Like, she's actually a cool as shit chick. Real, you can relate yeah. to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, she's cool. gonna take over. I'll the have world. to watch it. I'll have to watch it because yeah, that's the second recommendation now I've had for that show. But it's so Aussie. Anyway, that's it. Uh, What's your next one? So the UK is getting its first ever exclusively gay related reality dating TV show on television called Kiss the Boy. Gating. A Kiss the Boy. <laughs> and gating. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So the new series will air in the UK and hopefully it'll make its way over to Australia. But it's got singer Danny Minogue appearing as the host, please. It's set in Italy where 10 guys will enter a villa looking for love. But before talking, flirting or doing anything else, the contestants will have to share a kiss first. As soon as they meet, they kiss. No small talk, no flatter. Just one rom-com worthy moment that might just take their breath away. And that's a quote. What, with all of them or just with one person? All of them. So it's all together. So they all must kiss everyone individually. Ooh. I know. So there's not <laughs> enough gay dating shows around, please. And, you know, I love watching some dating dramas. So Very yay. exploitive, though. Like, uh, come on. Well, look at maths, you know. Yay oh, for you representation. Know how I feel about maths. So Minogue wrote in a tweet, in a picture-perfect misery, in Italy, it all starts with Miseria. Miseria, M A W S E R I A, Miseria. Misery. <laughs> In a free for all format, similar to shows like Love Island and Too Hot to Handle, everyone is a possible love interest on A Kiss to Boy. This is different from past queer dating shows like Finding Prince Charming, 12 Get Dates for Christmas, and 24 Hours of Love, where one leading gay man looked for love among a group of contestants in the style of the Bachelor mm-hmm. franchise. And the problem with the Bachelor-style gating... Uh, gating? <laughs> the problem with the Bachelor-style gay dating show is you run the risk of contestants who aren't the Bachelor actually falling for each other and mm-hmm. shit like that. Mm-hmm. So there was actually... It. yeah, Which is maps, really. They all end up fucking liking other partners into that each they're other. not with. So there what was do a you show- expect? <laughs> there was a show about 20 years ago that was called Boy Meets Boy. And I remember when it came out um, in of America course. and I was Googling this shit 20 years ago. So that's what, 20, 2003. And it was kind of the very when first. you were 40. <laughs> 41. Three. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of the first dating show. Same that... age I am now. Oh, my God. You can totally relate. And it was the first gay dating show I'd ever heard of. And I'm. Um, what they had to do in it, it was kind of like a gay bachelor show where 12 men were vying for the affections of one guy. But the trouble was half of them were straight and neither of the gay cast, including The Bachelor, knew that there was six straight guys in the mix of this um, show. So the premise was that if he ended up with a gay guy, he wins a holiday with that guy. But if he picks someone straight, then they either got the holiday or they won money or something. So it was Mm. pretty problematic. Mm, mm. There was also shows called Playing It Straight. I don't know if you've ever heard of those, where a girl had twelve I've heard men of it before. Yeah, and they yeah. pretend to be straight or gay. Or well, whatever. there was oh, a girl shit. that was sort of the bachelorette, basically, and had twelve men trying to win her over. And that was the same deal where half were gay, but she knew it from the very beginning and had to weed out the gay contestants. Nice. So there was an elimination each episode, and if That's and they had to reveal if they were thing gay to or do straight. To somebody. <laughs> You're trying to find real genuine love. I know. All these dumb people put turn it into this stupid. thing about is your gator? Is your gator on point? So, anyway, so I'm just excited to see a big old gay free for all with this new Akista boy, please. I bet you are. <laughs> Well, my other thing was just about the whole Barbie trailer. I've seen so much. So <laughs> when I log into work in the morning, when I open up my any type of internet explorer thing, it's all set to like a Google page. So I use so many internet versions throughout the day. Like I use a ridiculous amount of systems. It's insane. Um, and everything starts with like an internet-based program. Like there's so many. So I've always got just got, um, Chrome going all the time. Yeah. 
and you know how it comes up with all your news stories and your breaking and blah, 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 blah. And all I see every day is Barbie, 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 Mar- Margot, Robbie, Ryan Gosling. So apparently she's giving up um, film for a while because she got so injured through all the things that she had to do. There's like a gazillion and different. Barbie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like wow. in terms of like how many stances she had to do and all the things and stuff like that. And apparently something wrong with the hips or something like that. And oh. oh, who knows if you can believe it? Cause it's just constant. Like, but every time I log in, there's something new about Barbie and I haven't actually seen the trailer. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about it because I love her and I love Ryan Gosling. Um, and also who's the other one in it that plays the brunette who's really famous. Um, someone really hot. Oh, it's um, Dua Lipa. Oh, yeah, she plays Mermaid Barbie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I'd seen in it. I hadn't, I haven't seen the trailer either, but I'd seen all these posts and there's all these different Barbies that appear in it, mm. which I thought was kind of cool. Yes, I, like the concept seemed cool, but I and don't same with know. Ken's. If, there's if a few different Kens too. For my age group, as much yeah. as I love the actor, actors and actresses, um, I don't know if it's for my age. I don't know if it's tongue in cheek. I don't know if it's supposed to be humorous. I don't know if it's, if it's I'm guessing or... it's humorous and tongue in cheek. And I look, I won't be going to the cinema to see it, but I'll definitely watch it when it comes to Netflix or Prime or Foxtel or whatever. I'll give it a crack. Yeah, like, let's cool. give it a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a few different Kens in it as well. And I feel like if it was 10 years ago, I would be just totally on board and be like, oh my God, it's Barbie. Like, let's just do it. Um, because it's never really been a live action Barbie film that's been to the cinema ever, has there? No. And like Barbie is like a staple of my 80s and 90s youth. Do you know what I mean? Like that's how that's yeah. all we had was just Barbies. And we used to, I remember one of my friends came over, she was much older than me. One of my mum's friends. Oh, what? Was, was she was... fucking three years older than you or something? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you know, when you're little and someone comes <laughs> over who's older than you and you're like fascinated by them, yeah. and you think they're just amazing and everything they say and do is they're just the like cool ones. The coolest yeah. thing. I remember she had like this little jukebox that had a tape player that flashed up with lights. And I was just like, I need this in my life. Yeah. <clears throat> and I remember it, she was like, she came from a single parent like home like you know her dad was never there and her mum you know struggled to do stuff and I remember her mum paid a lot of money for it it was a one Christmas gift and when I saw it I was like this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen it's like mum I have to have one she's like you will never get one of those they cost a lot of money every time I went to her house I was like can we just put your little mini jukebox on and listen to music and she was one she like yeah which which cassette do you want to listen to like which is single, single. <laughs> um, and she used to come over and I remember like I'd have all these Barbie outfits, but she'd always do something weird with them. Like she'd twist them around and dress the Barbie up in something different that I'd never seen before in my life. So she'd take a traditional outfit that was made for Barbie and I had thousands of them. And but she'd it like up. turn it up and make it a boob tube or she'd tuck yeah. the skirt up underneath them and like, you know, make them wear different shoes or something like that. And I thought she was the coolest person I ever saw in my life. I was just like, everything she did, it was amazing. I was like, how can you <laughs> just transform my regular Barbie into this fashionista? It's so simple. You're she's amazing. A, she's already a fashionista. <laughs> she's ready for like, you know, Spanish holidays now. And she's ready for this. And she's she's already a mermaid. Been there. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> yeah. I was in awe of her. But yeah, Barbies were like, the thing when I was little, like it was everything Mm. Barbie, everything Mm. outfit, everything. Oh, she was the leading doll in the day, wasn't she? Mm. It was well Barbie rock star, (laughs) and she had her own soundtrack. We had a cassette that was a Barbie cassette, and she had like all these rock star songs. And me and my sister used to play it over and over, scream the words to each other, but then I'd be like, okay, get out now. (laughs) I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I want to listen to my Barbie cassette on my own. <laughs> and you're ruining it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> you're not doing the right harmonies. I don't like the way that you sing it. Get out of my room. <laughs> but I want to stay. No, get out. <laughs> I said out, bitch. <laughs> Barbie doesn't like you anymore. <laughs> 
So uh, everything about Barbie just resonates with me in such a way. And like, I often like by, you know, young children in my family, their first Barbie, like I'm always like, even when they were quite little, I'm like, I'm going to get them their first Barbie. And like, oh, they're not really into Barbies. And I give them the Barbie, they're like, they're into it now, the bitch. best <laughs> They will be, they will be into it. <laughs> So it's like Barbie is like such a massive thing. And remember how when she used to have like those weird feet that could only fit into those well, high Well, she was always stood on high on her toes, wasn't she? They've evened it all out now. It's, she's not the same. Remember, she was like had this, that tiny waist with the tiny, I mean, the massive, 34, massive, 12, massive boobs. 76, yeah. And you were constantly like, bitch, please, I want that figure. Like uh, that's, that's how you thought you were going to grow up to look. That's how you're meant to feel mm. to look yeah 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 yeah. but but you also your feet would be like you know the toes were like but her feet were always like they were positioned to be into a high heel yeah, so yeah, she'd yeah, walk totally. around on her teeth yeah 100 she had the best figure ever which is literally like an l mcpherson models body like no one could ever really achieve it, it l mcpherson didn't even have those i don't think boobs. any person <laughs> achieved the measurements that barbie had it was clearly a man who made that doll from the at the beginning <laughs> i think it was a woman actually mm. yeah obviously influenced by but then a man. influenced by a lot of male <laughs> fucking advertising agencies she might have a name to it but they were like no boobs need to be bigger yeah i want a smaller waist way bigger boobs and she would have come back with like boobs a bit bigger no bigger yeah, oh, the waist is no massive. bigger Okay, yeah. no, still bigger. You got the oh. scale wrong, Tells. Still bigger boobs. <laughs> I want ten ass. <laughs> she has a nice rack, Barbie. Well, the original OG. Yeah. I haven't really seen the like. I've seen a lots of different Barbies now, um, but th- we didn't have those back in those days. We just had the original blonde bombshell Barbie. Yeah. There was no coloured Barbies. <laughs> There was one type of can. There was no <laughs> representation. But there's um it's a, it's funny you say that because there's a character in it played by John Sira, I think his name is, who plays Ken's friend Alfie. I love John Sira. But there's um He's also and, a wrestler. No, that's John Cena, I think. Oh Cena. Oh so okay. it's a guy from Juno. And he was oh, also in Arrested guy, the Development. So he plays Con- Ken's friend Alfie, I think it is, and that like back in the fucking sixties, he was a little released... boy. He was he was Ken's no no it's the same something. No no it's his friend, so same age as Ken, and he could wear Ken's clothes too, and so they have this um thing in a Facebook group I'm in that's called Just Men's Being Friends, and it's um Ken with his friend Alfie who can wear Ken's clothes. He's the same size, and it's like you know this whole gay undertone about it. But he Isn't plays funny though. Like I think about the Toy Story representation of Ken too. Like oh, very yeah. much is like he's like all this closet. Himbo, um, but yeah. yet Barbie was so well endowed with her boobs and everything else, but Ken had no penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's that about? Like, serious. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta put the massive tits on her. Like they but have Ken's to be the tucked. hugest tits ever. Yeah. But Ken can never have a penis. He's tucked. <laughs> <laughs> He's just flat. <laughs> so, so speaking of penis, my next quick story is on Brokeback Mountain. Mm. And it's getting a stage adaptation to premiere in the West End. So, Do you know I've never seen that film and it's oh on my, my list? Oh, God. Okay, so we'll get to that. So it's got a fresh script and powerful original song, so it's a musical. And this production promises to be nothing short of extraordinary. Mm. The production brings to life the timeless and universal story of two young cowboys whose irresistible love spans two decades. Jack and Ennis have already been cast, with Tony and BAFTA Award-nominated Mike Faced as Jack and Academy Award-nominated Lucas Hedges as Ennis. I don't know who they are. I don't know who they are. Brokeback Mountain was actually released in 2005, directed by Ang Lee, and the movies told told the story of two cowboys, Ennis Del Mar, played by Heath Ledger, and Jack mm-hmm. Twist, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, mm. who met... Both actors who I fucking adore. Me too. And then I love um, fucking Michelle Williams, and I love... Uh, what's, her, what's her name? The other one, Princess Anne Star. Anne Hathaway. Oh, Anne Hathaway. Yeah. So good, so good. 
So, so the, is the, the movie amazing? Yes. So, well, it was amazing for me at the time. So 2005. So they meet and they form a deep, complex, emotional and sexual relationship mm. by working as sheep herders in the remote mountains of Wyoming in I the 60s. I just can't quit you. I can't quit you. Oh, I've got Why that in my I life. I quit you? Yeah. So the film explores themes of love, societal expectations and personal mm. struggles as both characters navigate their lives, marriages and the powerful bond they share over the course of... I'm the so going to make Tyler watch that. It's going to be like, no. No, did Bina put you up to this? No, I'm like, <laughs> it's happening, bitch. It's my choice. Yeah. So, it's, and the powerful bond they share over the course of two decades. The movie, the movie garnered critical acclaim and numerous awards for its sensitive portrayal of the characters' relationships and the challenges that they face. So, my next question was, have you seen the movie? Obviously not. So I remember going to Belimba when it first, the Belimba theatres when it first came out with a I've work colleague of mine, Emma. Desperate to see it since it first came out, but I also it, I like for, sometimes I think for some movies you have to see it with someone. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not a movie uh, yeah, that you yeah. can watch on your own. So you need to appreciate it with somebody. Remember yeah. how long I was single for for a very, very, very long time. Mm. So you know, and I also had a child. I couldn't be like, "Hey, Link, do you want to watch this movie about cowboys who?" Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, have a sexual relationship. Well, you wouldn't even you wouldn't watch Fatal Attraction with Link either. You know, which they're like, remaking, by the way. Have you seen that? Are they? Jake Jake Gyllenhaal's in it. Oh, fantastic! I love him. Do you not know so, that? No. Yeah, they just announced it. Jake Gyllenhaal's like the lead. Gyllenhaal, please, not Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. I thought it was so I was already in love with Jake Gyllenhaal mm. at the very first time I saw him as Donnie Darko. I also haven't seen Donnie Darko. Uh, I loved him and I loved the person he was in Donnie Darko. Oh, my God. Yay. So when I found out he was in a gay cowboy romance movie, boy, I oh boy, please. I was never really into Heath Ledger, the Heath Ledger fandom who was also in the movie. Amazing actor and all that, but he just didn't make my heart swoon oh, as much I as Jake did. Pleasure. Every time I see him in a film, I just want to cry because I'm so sad that he's dead. It oh, it's tragic. Super tragic. It depresses me so much because he's so talented and I love him so fucking much. But the whole, I wish I knew how to quit you line that Jack says to Ennis, Ugh, my gay heart. Oh. See, have you seen Two Hands? The Aussie yeah, film. Yeah, 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 where he leaves the fucking thing in the beach and it gets stolen as well at the very beginning. Mm. Money or drugs or something like mm, that. Money. Yeah. So this production promises to open new sight lines that were never visible in the film. With mm. a fresh script and skilled direction, the play explores the complex lives of working class men. So I don't know if it's set in the 60s still or a bit more later, struggling to survive the harsh brutality of their environment and the in insularity of their thinking i cannot wait to see it so the movie i like i really love the movie obviously because i was able to see a fucking not broadway movie what do you call it like an a-class movie mm. that had two mm. gay leads mm. and shit like mm. that so mm. for me it was just yeah, like massive big amazing deal. it's a very slow movie but that's mm. the whole thing of ang lee's direction as well so what else and does ang lee do so it's kind of it's kind of got a Yellowstone feel because it's set in Wyoming and the mountains and all that well, shit. Well, it just occurred to me that after all of Tyler Sheridan's films that I've seen, there's never any type of gay character in any of his films or his um TV Oh, there were some lesbians in in the Yellowstone. Jack um Oh yeah, that's it though. A bit yeah. tiny part. There's no there's no it was a tiny wet Yeah. Oh, which surprising. annoys me too. So Ang Lee did The Life of Pi. Have you seen that? Uh -uh. Have you not? So I read the book The Life of Pi in London I as I was on the tube and the movie, they do a very good thing. It's it's a very, very good movie. Mm. And the effects in it, it's super good. I would recommend watching that. Put that on your list. Okay. Life of Pi. Brokeback Mountain, he did Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Mm. He did the 2003 Hulk. He did Gemini Man in oh. 2019. Oh, also Ryan Gosling. Eat, Drink, Man, it. Woman. Sense and Sensibility in 95. Mm, okay. But, yeah, no, um, definitely watch Life of Pi. It's fantastic. And you will actually, it's a very good movie. You'll like it. Okay, so should I get on to the final topic? 
please. Amanda Bynes update. How's she going? Is she doing well? No. Oh. So remember our whatever happened to episode where we spoke about Amanda Bynes? And we well, were praying for a health and, you yes. know, good so life. So there's been a bit her. of an update with regards to her. Bless her. For those who don't know, she is a child actor, famous in a few Nickelodeon series, and then went on to star in a few movies. Totes hilarious in She's the Man. She was found almost among one, others. almost among others. So she was found almost one year to the day when her nine-year conservatorship was officially terminated, um, walking in the streets naked. Her mother was her conservator starting back in 2013 when it was clear she was having issues with mental health and she was she diagnosed. She just got out with, when we last uh, talked about it. She just yes, got out of it. She just gotten rid of it. Yeah. And she, she was, was diagnosed a... with bipolar disorder. So Straight after a series of bizarre incidents, including one where she set her neighbor's driveway on fire, which we talked about, almost engulfing, engulfing her dog in flames, and she was sent to the psychiatric ward for treatment. She's now been placed on a psychiatric hold after she was found roaming the streets naked and alone. An eyewitness report tells her, tells, oh, sorry, an eyewitness tells, oh my God, an eyewitness report. Oops. She was seen walking near downtown LA early Sunday morning without any clothes. She allegedly waved down a car, telling the driver she was coming down from a psychotic episode. She then called 911 herself. She was taken to a nearby police station where a mental health team determined she was needed to be placed on a 5150 psych hold, which allows a person with mental challenge with a mental challenge to be involuntarily detained for 72 hours in a psychiatric hospital. Fortunately, it doesn't appear that she was hurt during the ordeal, that things could have been much worse given the area where she was found, downtown LA. Naked. I was just thinking downtown LA. Since the conservatorship ended, Amanda seemed to be doing well for herself, mm. though the most recent incident is obviously concerning and it's unclear if her parents or legal team will have to step in at this stage. Bless her, and we're sending you all our well wishes, Amanda Bynes, please. Should have started with that. Don't end on a downer. And then the Grim Reaper. Bold people over. <laughs> oh, poor Amanda. I know, it's sad, isn't it? Because she was doing well. It was like a Britney come through story. Has Britney really come through, though? Yeah, but, you know, with conservatorship, conservatorship, ship, ship, ship. Well, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our take on the current affairs that tickled our fancy. Super sad. Join us next week for our annual Eurovision special. Ooh, Ooh can't wait. We have been busy. Anyone who knows me understands my obsession with it. Eurovision is over it well and truly. So get into it, you fuckers. Mm. We have been busy getting our faves together for a few months now and are ready to share all our musical love with you and the wonder that is Eurovision 2023 Liverpool. I don't know who my favourites are. <laughs> you know who your favourites are. Just I love them all. It's a good year. And remember, dear listeners, if you're whining, you're winning. Good night, stupid bitches. Good night. Yeah, that stupid bitch. Mm -hmm. He's a stupid bitch. What a stupid bitch. That stupid bitch.